Let's see if the Leviathans can make it through that early game so they can fight up against the Camelot Kings. Our first match of week. Is the last bit of damage there? No, it's not. Genetics won't hit the damage, but a blink from Variety and the Let's tier first fire. blood core. Not onto the Bologna this time, but it is there for the Camelot Kings in their solo lane. What a banish! Oh no, no, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm still confused. It's still a good banish. It's still a good banish. I thought he did. The banish was great, but how about the team fight after the fact? The Leviathans get the Gold Fury, but do they win the fight? Netrioid gets the Scarab's Blessing, and he'll go back, and Zapman starting to catch a bit of fire. First kill of the game over to the Leviathans. Remember, he's got a lot of health, but not a lot of prots, and he is melted through by the Leviathans. Genetics abducted back in, and Shinto deals the killing blow. Finally, this deadlock has been broken. That entire engagement, I mean, the, the start of it, specifically from the Kings, that World Weaver, feels like it comes out like he's Captain Twig being melted through as well. But Zatman has taken a chunk of damage. Might have been the World Weaver that caught him out, and Twig has been jumped on by Panatom, and the Leviathans have now finished off the jungler for the Camelot Kings. But Variety? As eyes for Shinto, Netroid gets the Scarab's Blessing, Big Man Tings drops one, Zapman has lost his FG buff, and that's maybe as good as it'll get for the Camelot Kings, no further fight. Again, does it completely kill this power play? Probably not, I think the, the, the Leviathans are still in a good spot to get aggressive, that tier 2 on right at least should fall down. The Fury is gone, Zapman is still gone for 5 seconds, yes you're ahead, but... The Leviathans now caught out, and, and you have now lost a second Fire Giant buff, and Gore, what's worst? What's worse? Is Wrong You is, is juggled with Zapman. Now Wrong You is dead for a minute back in respawning. Now Shinto can get jumped on and Variety has been able to follow up. Shinto though still lives. Shell gets used and Variety burnt down as Netrioid deals a killing blow on the Merlin on the other side and Zapman back from base. Tilts the scales back towards the Atlantis Leviathans and this is what we're fighting over. We're fighting over Zapman's second chance and look at the Jingwei go on the other end of the Scarab's Blessing. Finally, he's able to get it. But look how much that it opens up for him. Like you said, you lose three EFG buffs. They lose four people, and and maybe if Zap had just followed them, maybe the game. If he was up here, that Phoenix would have been shredded, and this Titan would have been very easy to kill. Knockback from Variety and Twig dropped by Panatom. And my goodness, this nemesis at the end of this game has really started to come alive. Or what was the Titans' health bar? The Leviathans, as five, walk into the King's base. Gore the Leviathans in a... Just gonna lock in the Tiamat. All reliable, I like to call her. I mean, she just does yeah. good damage. She doesn't have crazy early pressure. Doesn't get rolled over. It doesn't have... Doesn't get the damage onto Yark. Panatom's level five. Could be first blood. Piercing Moonlight right on time. Delivers Panatom to Variety's doorstep. And the Caltrops deal the killing blow. Leviathans and Panatom on the board first. And it's a balancing downside, right? You, you've got Hardcore and Panatom hitting five. But Variety blinks for it, double stun, and it's Zapman who's down to half HP. Fear no evil onto the Pie Frost, and Zapman will never reach safety. Use the Scarab's Blessing onto himself. And so the Kepri remains on the map. Now wrong, you left alone. Should be another one for the Camelot Kings, and it is. And the team fight is ignited. The Kings will find two, but the health bar's too low to stick around for the objective. I can't. That's gonna matter a lot, especially Wrong Yu gets picked. Oh no, Wrong Yu doesn't get a choice in his fate. The Camelot Kings abduct, fear no evil. Both get used, and Wrong Yu, or just has a full minute remaining. Fear no evil onto Zapman. Oh my goodness, but Twig is burnt through. And now the go button pressed. Wrong Yu is transformed. Deep in the back line is York Corbin. He'll backpedal his way towards the front line. Engagements anyway. Twig is going to go for something. The blink doesn't go off though. Oh, it has to use the beads. And in fact, Twig jumps out. We haven't seen Piercing Moonlight used aggressively in like 20 minutes, but we have seen Fear No Evils hit their target. Panatom, tired of waiting though, has found damage onto Big Man Tings. But look at Zatman and Wrong Yu being transferred back by Variety. One kill, it's a bloodbath, but Panatom wants to do more, has found the damage, found the return kill, but ends up being a two for one. Maybe the bloodiest team fight we've had in 40 minutes a game. Something to sweat about. So I like the way that the Kings play that, because they can do it again in mid if they really want it. Wrong you. Stunned out. Shinto. Oh, he might die here, and he will. Captain Twig has found the opening kill. The mid lane Phoenix gone. Variety, though, takes big return damage, but there's a scare of blessing awaiting. And the frontliner gets a free escape ticket from his support. Darkcore's got to head back to the fountain. Wrong you, not happy with the way that this game has gone, but has to be satisfied now. The Camelot Kings have lost two, or they've gotten two.
And now it's just this weird position to be in. You've got five ready to walk into the Titan room. Can you really do it? I mean, well, look, she does dead. Zap deals decent damage. I don't know that there's too much to worry about, though. The, the strength that you have, the, the flexibility you have. The Hunbats for your team fight phase. I mean, that one god alone provides so much CC through that Fear No Evil. And sure, even though, again, a low kill count game, I believe, to move into the semifinals days and, and definitely taking some extra caution in these first couple games. Yeah, I think every, you got to imagine every play call is met with some hes hesitation. When he first came into the SBL on this Horus pick, I think one of the main reasons the pick got nerfed so hard oh, yeah. to the skies was able to zoom you around for a bit. Now a little bit slower still though. Crazy early pressure. It's going to be setting up like Fracture and a Heart Bomb. That's going to be a kill lane. You got to make sure that your positioning is top tier. You're looking at a Kabrakan and an Artemis. Two picks that could definitely feel the brunt of that CC. You got to watch out for that. Wrong you has been just eating these Heart Bombs and he'll eat the last one. A first blood to Netrioid and Genetics over in the duo lane. It, it, Gore, the, the pressure was just out of the Shing Chen and Variety and Variety. The one to pick up the first kill in this fight, but it's immediately answered back. The Leviathans drop the soul laner, and so tanks down on either side. And just, I mean, look, a great ult. Drops on a Netrioid, and Zapman finds the 1v1. I've willed it into existence. Zapman goes big, but Genetics here to repay the favor. A lot of damage to go into the fight. Wing forward from Variety. That catches out wrong you, but... Maybe right where Wrong Yu wants to be, though the double root down from Variety slows down the initiation from the Leviathans, but not slow enough. Panaton picks up a kill on a Captain Twig, takes all of the damage. That's just simple from the Camelot Kings. Now you've got a numbers advantage. And a 5v4, Tusky drops out from Zapman, though. The CC, good enough from the Leviathans to slow down the pacing of this fight. And Captain Twig... And it goes to showcase once again, Bubble easily going to turn things around. Well, what's happened to Netrioid? He's been jumped on by the Atlantis Leviathans, but how about that reinitiation from Variety? It's fantastic. Panatom has completed the backline dive, and at least Netrioid dies off as well. But the Leviathans have no more carries and no more jungler. And how about that team fight? for the Camelot Kings. Fire Giant now pulled his three go down on the Levi's. That's the second time Harkor has had to, or sorry, Rung Yu has had to use these walls. Feels like it favors them. Maybe the last good chance for the Leviathans here. Genetics to the skies and genetics to the mid lane, but that's what <laughs> Netrioid alone. Netrioid never got on the bus with the rest of his team and now the Leviathans have a 5v4 advantage and the rest of the Camelot Kings gotta hope their gold lead is enough. Damage wise it is and you've lost a good chunk of your HP in turn. Your core is, is simply alone. And now the dash forward That's back. from Panatom brings Netrioid into the fight. The fight has been brought to Netrioid, who was just back in base. Fight. So look, Variety's gonna oh, be able to find big. a very easy engage and keep chasing him. Oh, this is big, and the Kings reposition, and the Kings knock it down the pins. Your core knocked up and tossed aside, and it is just damage and just burn from the Camelot Kings. Netroid being dead was about as good as it was going to get for the Leviathans, but it has gotten a whole lot worse. DSI to the Camelot Kings and the number one seed. 33 minutes into game three and Gore. One of the game winning picks for the Camelot Kings to now run through this one. Find themselves a 2-1. It's hard to, to really keep them down just by keeping one player away. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Netroid just said, guys, mom said you had to let me farm with you. And then <laughs> they, ki they kicked him off the bus. <laughs> they 